You know that moment at the start of every main Pokemon games, where a professor gave you a Pokemon and asked you to help the research by giving you a Pokedex? You, a random neighborhood kid, with no research experience at all? Yes, this is a form of citizen science. And, what if I told you, you can also do this in real life? So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is citizen science? Citizen science, or sometimes called community science, crowd science, or maybe other names too, is research that includes participation from the public. Sometimes, scientists or perhaps organization can advertise a research project that is open for public participant. In general, anyone can volunteer, even kids. Whether you are someone who views the field as a hobby, or maybe you're just bored, whatever your reason is, really. But of course, for certain research, there could be specific criteria for participants. Citizen science had been going on for decades in many areas, including zoology, of course. Over time, as technology improved, citizen science also become more accessible to, basically, everyone. You could even browse for available projects from your bedroom. For example, in websites like Zooniverse. In Zooniverse, you can just go to project, click the discipline that you are interested in, and see the available projects. But I know that some of you might think, what if I just want to contribute without interacting with other humans? You know, as some random nobody in their own personal space. Sometimes I feel that way too. Good news is, of course we can. Like in Pokemon games, we can just go our own way, have fun, and enjoy finding animals. The thumbnail is not just a clickbait, you know. Let me introduce you to iNaturalist. In iNaturalist, you can contribute by uploading your visual observation through photographs. They also have smartphone apps, so it's quite handy. Even if you are a complete beginner and you can't really identify the animals, they have a computer vision to help you. Basically an AI. Think of it like a Pokedex, really. And of course, since it's AI, the identification won't be perfect. Good news is, other users can suggest an identification, which make the data more robust and accurate. If you are a competitive person, there are even leaderboards in iNaturalist. Here, you can see a leaderboard for identifiers, that is for person that helps suggest identifications. And there is also a leaderboard for observers, that is for the person who directly make observation and upload photos. Most of the data are available to the public, so anyone can see if they want. If you are curious of what observations have been made in your area, you can just click Explore, check out the Map tab, and then just zoom in to specific field of view. All of these pins are observations. If it's too much for you, then you can draw a border to remove other pins. Here you can see all the species on the right, and you can just hover over them to see where it is. You can also click on the pin to see the specific information about the observation. If you want to search for specific animals, you can do so, in many levels of taxon even. For example, here I can search for the family level, I can also search for the genus level, and of course, species level, even subspecies level. If you click on it, you can see these red squares on the map. This is the location of observations. If I zoom in, you can see it clearly. That is exploring by observations. You can also explore by species in this tab right here. You can see a lot of information here. I'll just pan over the page for a while. You can check it out yourself if you are interested. There are also projects too. So you can contribute to a specific project if you want. If you just want the Pokedex function, there is also a smartphone app called Seek, which is developed by them. It utilizes the data and the AI from iNaturalist so you can use it to identify animals. You can just aim your camera at something and it will help you identify it. I believe there are also badges you can get in the app, like an achievement in video games. But again, as I've said before, it's AI, so it's not perfect. Depends on where you live, there might not be enough data to do an accurate identification. Which is why, I will still suggest using the iNaturalist itself to get ID suggestion from others.
And you also contribute to science, so yeah. Oh, it might be obvious by now, but iNaturalist is not just for animals, of course. I just talk about animal because I am a zoologist. Anyway, that's for visual data. If you like audio, maybe you like hearing voices of nature or something like that, there are places where you can contribute by providing such data. For example, Xenocanto. In Xenocanto, the burden of identification lies to the uploader, so in a sense it will be difficult for a complete beginner. Still, people can also discuss and suggest identification for your recording. Just like iNaturalist, most of the data are also open to public, so you could just casually browse them if you just want to hear animal sounds. You can browse by region. For example, let's zoom to, I don't know, Florida maybe. You can shift drag to select the region. Then you can see the recording locations. If you click on it, you can see the specific recording. And of course, you can play it. You can also search for taxa in different levels, species, genus, or even family. Here you can see the information, including the type of voice they are making. See this? For example, begging call, flight call, song, etc. So you can also learn the specific vocalization of specific species. There are other sites too, of course, but I'm not familiar with them. For example, for birds, there are ebirds.org. I believe they also have an app like iNaturalist. There are also specific ones for specific regions. For example, in Japan, there is Sakanazukan for fishes. I've heard there are also several things like this for North America. I've heard of butterflies and moths of North America for Lepidopteran. And Odonata Central for dragonflies and other Odonata, of course. I'm sure there are also others in different regions that I'm unaware of. While citizen science can be helpful for science and public, there are still precautions in doing so. One of the major things is the potential of exploitation. For example, it's cool when you observe an endangered or even a critically endangered animal in the wild. All you want to do is share that observations to others and contribute to science. And I kid you not, it is indeed very helpful for science. But that data can be exploited by poachers and illegal hunters. This has been a concern in zoology since years ago, which is why, in some cases, the observation data might be restricted. If you are a researcher and you wish to obtain the data for research, you can still contact the sites or even the contributor to gain access to the data, of course. Still, be careful of where you share your data. The other precaution is about the accuracy of identification. Like I said before, computer visions are not perfect, so you cannot trust the AI identification completely. Some animal groups, like fish and reptiles, for example, sometimes need meristic characters for accurate identification. In these two groups, you sometimes need to count scales. And as you might have guessed, it's still too difficult to identify these species by computer vision alone. Which is why, identifications from experts are still needed. In other types of project, amateur observation could lead to some bias and mistakes. But again, experts can and should analyze the data to mitigate this. All in all, citizen science can be a fun and impactful activity. You can even have a friendly competition with your friend to see who could make the most observations. If you are bored, you can just go out, touch grass, and do some observations. If you are a teacher, you can even use it to make a fun educational activity for your students. I've seen it implemented in laboratory teaching myself. So yeah, have fun, learn more, and in doing so, Contribute to science, because science is for everyone. That's it folks, enjoy your day, and that's all for now.